QuickBooks Online Comparative Profit and Loss P&L Income Statement. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive searching in our online search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive. Selecting the item that has Intuit.com and the URL Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're gonna be using the United States version of the software and verify that we're not a robot. Zooming in by holding down control up on the scroll wheel. We're currently at 125% on the zoom and noting that in the cog drop down, we're in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. We'll try to toggle back and forth between the two views so you can see where stuff is located in each of them. Right click it on the tab up top to duplicate it. We do this every time to put our reports in the duplicated tabs. Right click in the tab again to duplicate it again tab to the middle as the tab to the right is thinking reports on the left and we're going to be opening up the major balance sheet report as that's thinking tab to the right reports on the left this time the p to the l the profit and the loss the the point of our focus in this presentation closing up the hamburger otherwise known as the ham boogie and then changing the range from 01 01 22 tab 12 31 22 tab run it to refresh it tab to the left close up the hand boogie scroll up rangings changings 010122 tab 123122 tab run it to refresh it that's what we do every time that's our setup process we've been focusing over here on the income statement and now we want to do some variance on the income statement note that we're not going to go through all of the items up top to format the income statement because many of these formatting options are similar to what we saw in the balance sheet and will be applicable to many different reports. What we do want to look at are the different variants of the income statement, keeping in mind that you might think about providing these variants to a client, for example, or possibly a supervisor periodically, possibly at the end of the month or the end of the quarter or the end of the year. So the standard profit and loss would be your, your first go-to profit and loss. You could think about a summary profit and loss in a similar fashion to the summary balance sheet by basically collapsing the, the line items. So I could collapse all the line items. That becomes a little, a little almost too simple in some cases, but still we have a multiple step income statement here. So you could try that as your intro kind of report because remember, if you're presenting in particular, oftentimes you want to start simple, draw people in, and then expand, add more detail at that point in time. And then the next thing we might want to look at are comparative type of reports, which we'll see here. Note that as we start getting into these comparative reports, just as we saw on the balance sheet, we can get a whole lot of different variations, meaning I can compare different two months I can compare three months I can compare the whole quarter in months I can compare quarter to quarter I can have four quarters in a year I can compare the current data to the prior year data so there's almost an infinite number of reports once we start mixing and matching with different periods so you want to think about which group of reports you want to be putting together and the list could get quite long just looking at the balance sheet and income statement reports as we're doing now and then we can tack on other reports such as sales reports and whatnot in addition to that which we'll see later okay so the first kind of comparative reports we can do is we can hit the drop down here and we can we can break out the range which is a year right now by days that would be quite long if you had a whole year weeks months is more common quarters is going to be quite common if you have a whole year's worth of data years or you can break it out by customer vendors employees products and services so let's start with the quarters 
if we break this one out by quarter and run it now we didn't have any activity in the first couple quarters but you can see the idea here now we've got the activity for the last couple quarters and the total now note it gives you a total column because the income statement is a timing statement it has a beginning and an end we're seeing how far we went in a particular time this is different than the balance sheet you'll recall let's just check that out for references sake back to the balance sheet and put this one on quarters run it there's no total column because the balance sheet is as of a point in time so whenever you're applying these tools to any report you want to think am i using a report that is reporting as of a point in time or has a time frame like the income statement back to the income statement now we could of course do that for different time frames the other common one would be months so if we broke this out by month then we've got our month by month comparison 12 months gets quite extensive so <laughs> And then you've got, you could break it out basically by customers. So that's a little bit, you know, less usual. So now you've got your columns up top, breaking out the information by customer. So it could be a useful report. And then you could do the same thing by vendor. You would think this would be, you know, most applicable to the bottom half of the report, your, your expenses down here. So, and then you've got your breaking out by employees which not the most common thing to do you would think on the income statement but there it is less than you could go to the days now if you went to the days it's likely that you have a smaller range up top say so if i went to the days for example say i would run it from it had it had to think a lot right there because <laughs> i put it on days but probably we would want to run that maybe for a month from 120122 to 123122 and then run it days might make a little bit more sense in that context we can run it by weeks which might make more sense again if you if you had just a month's worth of data and then we had the month so let's bring it back to the total that's one way you can do it and i'm going to then go from uh 010122 to 123122 you can also do multiple years that way right i can i could expand the range here for multiple years like let's say this was two zero and then i've got a range spanning multiple years and i can break it out now by years and note when i do that that means i can put more than two years and uh and i'm gonna have the the oldest year up front is how they format it now if i just want to compare two things comparing just two uh time frames is nice because then instead of getting the total over here i can take the difference between the two and it's important on the income statement to note that because the total is nice because that means you can have like four quarters and then the year to date numbers on one report and then having two columns is nice because instead of taking the total in that case you might take the difference to see the performance you had in one uh, quarter for example versus another so now let's take a look at that example we'll have to use a different method so i'm going to go back to the totals only back to the starting point change the range up here back to 2022 to 2022 that's our starting point and now i'm going to use these uh items to do a side-by-side -side comparison so let's start it out with just like uh december and then i want to compare november and december so i could th then take the beat the total of just December, which is 120122 to 123122, run it. Now I've got one month's worth of data. And then I'm going to go up top and say, let's take the prior period, which will be November. Notice you got to be a little careful because it, you want to make sure that you're comparing month to month and the months are not even in days. So it might try to compare like 30 days to 30 days as opposed to a month that has 31 days versus 30 days, for example. Run it, and I'm gonna run it again because it didn't, it didn't click. And so now we've got December, the most current period, and then the prior period, November next to it. And then of course, the natural thing to do here, we could imagine having a total that would say, this is how much I earned in December and November, November and December. But that's not what we're looking for here. We're looking for the difference this time. So now I'm going to say, all right, what's the difference between those two? Change in dollar amount. Run it. Run it again because it didn't go. And there it is. So now we've got our difference column, which is quite common. And then we might want our percentage change. Percentage change. Run it. 
and run it again. That's our horizontal analysis, similar to what we saw on the balance sheet. Horizontal analysis will basically be taking, let's just take a, a line item here, like a income. So here's my income. We're taking the 3819.8 minus the 4526.72, a difference of 706.92 divided by the prior period, November of 4526.72, moving the decimal two places over 15.62 on the percent change on the right hand side. So the percent change is useful anytime you're doing a measurement type of thing. And we see this in jobs that anytime you work at a job, if they're trying to measure your performance, they're gonna have to use ratios oftentimes to compare your performance as we can see in athletic jobs when we're trying to compare who's the best at whatever we're saying they're the best at best hitter or whatever you got to take averages in order to do that because they had different at bats and whatnot and so on and so forth okay so then uh, we can also do a you know the same method i can hit the drop down up top and say what if i want to compare quarter to quarter so i can take this and say at the last quarter well actually not here let's do it up here the last quarter is 10122 and so I'm gonna say that's this quarter. I wanna take it to the previous, compared to the previous period. So I've got October through December, the last quarter, October, November, December, and then it takes the previous period. So you can give that quarter, you know, the quarter by quarter change on that, which can be nice. And so, and then you can, you know, you could do a year by year change in, in the same fashion. You could say, I'm gonna go from 010122 and then run it. And now I've got, nothing's in the prior year but if there were you'd have the year by year change so you can see there's a there's a whole lot of of uh, variants of reports that we can get once we do these comparative type reports we can also compare to the prior year any current period to the prior year so for example let's take us back to the beginning so we're back at the starting point let's go from 01 0122 to 12 31 22 which i was already at and then hit the drop down and stop this nonsense. Stop that nonsense. Back to normal. And now we're gonna say, well, let's try to compare just like the last month to the same month in the prior period, in the prior year, I mean. So let's go from 120122, that's the current month, run it. So now I've got one month of data and I wanna compare it to last year's December number. So now I'm going to go down and say, I want to look at it compared to the previous, the previous year. So I'm going to pick up the previous year now and just run that, run it again. And so now we've got December for 2022 compared to December of 2021. That's quite common because now we want to see this month in the current year because we might have a, a seasonal type of business compared to the same month in the prior year. So that's kind of a common comparison then i can do of course the dollar change and the percent change there and run it with the dollar change and the percentage change and there we have it there's no data in the prior year but you can imagine what it would look like because we've got the difference and the change and so on we could do the same thing comparing the current quarter to the prior quarter i could say i'm going to say the quarter data is from 10 to 12 31 22 run it and then it'll take the previous year. So there's the prior year on uh, the prior quarter. And then if we go back up top, we've got a couple other comparative type of reports here. The, uh, the year the year to date. So and this will this will give you a comparison to the current year to date. So for example, let's take a look at December here and say we got we got 120122 to 123122. So that's one month of data. And I want to see that month compared to the entire year to date, right? Because it's a, it's a, it's a timing report. So let's just check it out and we'll explain it then. So we're going to say, we want to take this, compare it to the year to date. And then I can take a percent. Let's go ahead and click off the percent year to date and run that report, run that report. So now we've got December compared to the year to date numbers. So December is part of the entire year because we, we're gonna be thinking, you know, performance in terms of a year, December as part of that year. And then you've got your percentage to say, for example, let's take a look at the total down here. And we say total materials, 
the December materials are at 1351.5 divided by the total year to date numbers divided by the 4736.47 and that gives us 28%. So December makes up 28% of the year to date numbers as of this time. You can also compare to the prior year to date numbers. So if I take that same month, hit the drop down, and we want to compare to the pre previous year to date numbers, we could do that. And so run it. And so now I've got the pri prior period. There was nothing in the prior period because we don't have any data in it, but I can compare the current month, which isn't part of uh, 2021 numbers, right? It's part of 2022 numbers. So it doesn't really make sense to say it's a percent of that, you know, the prior year to date number, but you can compare it in a similar fashion. Uh, here's December and here's last year's, you know, year to date numbers on the right hand side. So those aren't quite as common of a comparisons, but those are, you know, can be useful comparisons as well. So the bottom line for the comparative reports, you've got your comparative of multiple periods on the income statement, which can be nice because then they can add up to the total on the right hand side. Common reports would be multiple months, multiple quarters, multiple years. And then you can take a difference comparison, which means you only have two periods, which would look something like this. We can go from December again to December and then take the pre previous period, boom, boom, and uncheck that. And that's your common type, type of comparative kind of report. And you can imagine multiple other comparative reports you can do quarter to quarter, half year to half year, this year to last year, this quarter to last quarter, and so on and so forth. Okay, so then we also have the, the vertical analysis that we'll take a look at in future presentations. If I was to then give this to somebody for external reporting purposes, then I would typically make the, the bracketed negative numbers, remove the pennies, negative numbers as red numbers, and then on the header and footer, I might change the name from a profit and loss to a comparative income statement. And that might give you a little bit of a touch, a little bit of a differentiation to other bookkeepers, for example. I'm gonna get rid of the date, time, report, basis. I'll keep the alignment and run it. And there you have it. And then looks looks fancy. And then we could go up top and we could uh, cut, we can save the customization. Let's do that so that I don't have to do that every time I want to group these reports. If I go to the first tab and then refresh it and scroll on down to the reports, reports, we've got then in the reports, our customized, there it is right there. So there's the process in future presentations. We'll then look at kind of like the vertical analysis type of reports, which is another uh, you know variant that's quite common uh, report to be putting together. So just to note where we've been, if I go to the cog dropdown and switch to the business view, we've, we've just basically been working under the reports. So, so that's under the business view, get things done. That's our home page. Reports are on business overview and then the reports. Here's the standard, here's the customized.